Are you thinking about letting your car's servicing schedule slide because you're on lockdown, because you're like not using your car that much, because it's socially responsible, because you're socially distancing, whatever, and that all makes it okay, QED? Is that the thought process? Because if it is, bad idea. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where stay in. New car buyers save thousands off their brand new cars. Hit me up on the website. Or don't, I don't mind. So, a couple of reports ago, I covered this somewhat happy reduction in holiday road death, thanks to the 15 Corinthians and the Easter Bunny locking us all down, while freedom and the economy got crucified with uh, resurrection, no details yet. TBA. In other words, people just aren't driving as much these days, so we're not croaking as often in car crashes, yes, which is a silver lining. The roads are like Woody Harrelson in Zombieland meets Mila Jovovich in Resident Evil or something, and your car is sitting there in the driveway forlornly, hoping you will ride her to the supermarket gloriously once again, you know, perhaps someday soon. Unfortunately, your car's service requirements are not mitigated by the zombie pandemic. In fact, the kinds of driving that many people are doing right now, which would be infrequent supermarket sorties once or twice a week, you know, Operation Dinner In, again, hashtag Robert Redford, that kind of driving is hell on earth for engine oil. Engine oil gets very contaminated during short trips and the contaminants break it down. And as a result, wear rates in your engine skyrocket. That's the truth of the matter. I mean, synthetic engine oils are much more durable now than mineral oils were 20 years ago or something, but you can't escape the second law of thermodynamics on this or at any other time. It doesn't feel like hard work for a car driving like this, but it is hell down there. The car suffers in silence, don't they always? Except, of course, Volkswagens and the three-pronged suppository, of course, and Jeeps. They tend to complain loudly and often. The Ming Moles there, doing their bit for society. No complaining from them ever, I note. They've had it rough, too, many of them. Still, if it does not kill you, it makes you stronger. And the best steel routinely being forged in the hottest of fires, I note. Every Ming Mole I have ever met has been such a staunch supporter of and advocate for regular servicing. Go figure. And bolt-on accessories, now that I think about it. Genuine is best, obviously, to a Ming mole, but it is possible to get too bogged down in this debate about aftermarket versus genuine. You can be too hard a marker, I think you'd agree. Some aftermarket add-ons really are inspirational, or at least novel, just saying. So, a couple of things on servicing, harking back to a previous fork in this report before we got bogged down in the Ming moles. Dealerships and independent mechanics remain open, right? So there's really no excuse not to get your car serviced on time. That's not going to wash. Secondly, a lot of people are going to be shifting from distance-based servicing to time-based servicing this year. Or at least they should be doing that, even if they don't know it. See, if you're a bit of an ignorame ass on this... Cars get serviced on a time or distance basis, and it's whichever one occurs first. For mainstream cars out there in Shitsville driveways now, looking down the barrel of going to the supermarket perhaps once a week, the two most common servicing intervals are going to be six months, 10,000 kilometres, or 12 months, 15,000 kilometres. Most 
Brand new cars are going to be 12 months, 15,000, but a lot of cars out there in service now are still going to be six months, 10,000, okay? It's in the manual either way. Take a look if you don't know what your servicing interval is because it pays to get on top of that. The key point here is the service due trigger is whatever clocks over first, the time or the distance. You can't just sit there and go, I'm at the time, but I'll wait for the distance. A lot of people do this and it's always risky and ill-advised. This will happen increasingly as people drive less on lockdown. They're going to get to the time first and there'll be plenty of distance left, okay? So don't lull yourself into this false sense of security, okay? If your car is still under warranty and you miss a service because you rolled on the time, even though the Ks had not yet managed to come up because zombie apocalypse, you were busy, you know, I don't know, building a bunker in the backyard and lining it with hoarded toilet tissue, whatever. If the powertrain fails because you have done this for whatever reason, there's a really good chance that your warranty claim will be denied by the dealer and the manufacturer. And you can bitch about it, you can threaten to go to that asshole, um, you know, that asshole, what's his name? <sighs> that guy that all, all the car makers hate him on YouTube. It'll come to me, anyway. If that happens, you will not have a leg to stand on. They will actually have a point, you can debate it, you're gonna lose, okay? Likewise, if your car is out of warranty, but it's still kinda new, you will lose any protection you might have enjoyed under the acceptable quality consumer guarantee in Australian consumer law, because not servicing your car counts as abuse, and abuse is not covered either under warranty or under consumer law. It's kinda self-inflicted. The cruel thing here is that the failure to service your car might be completely unrelated to whatever it is that actually blows up expensively on the damn car. But if the manufacturer can join even the most tenuous of dots between these two events, your claim is gonna be toast, okay? And it's gonna be expensive, which is why the biggest defibrillators in dealerships are located in the friggin' service departments, because that's where the biggest shocks are. Finally, before I let you go on this, remember that your factory warranty cannot be leveraged against getting your car serviced by the dealer. They can't do that. Manufacturers and dealers certainly want you to presume that only authorised dealers can provide servicing. But in fact, denying a warranty or consumer law claim simply because you did not get your car serviced by them is A, bullshit, and B, quite illegal. Dealership servicing is typically expensive, so if money is tight for you right now because of lockdown and the apocalypse and knock-on effects and the fact that the Prime Mincer is an unmitigated dick who excels at only one thing, which is sucking at everything he attempts, then consider saving a few bucks by getting your car serviced independently. The prerequisites there to enjoy all of the protections of warranty and consumer law are A, the dude who puts his hands on the tools needs to be a qualified mechanic, B, the service needs to be done on time and according to the schedule, and C, the parts do not need to be genuine, like brake pads or oil filters, whatever, but they do need to be fit for purpose, okay? In other words, a quality aftermarket oil filter or whatever is gonna be fine. Do not scrimp on the servicing. The zombie apocalypse has liberated you from the imperative to catch up with your mother-in-law over Easter. <laughs> yes. But you cannot escape the obligation to service your car quite so easily, damn it. And if you do, you'll be out in the cold if anything goes wrong.